Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nikolai. Today, I am here with Grey Wolf. You may also know him as Boss or Samrun. I've known him for a very, very, very long time. How are you, man? Doing quite well. How about yourself? Doing awesome. Thanks for making some time for me. Me and you actually met, I would say, probably about two years ago. Would you say that's accurate? I think about two two and a half yeah that sounds about right and uh when i met you you were a warlock was that right <laughs> yeah i was it was a uh, sovereign the voice of the iron sworn i think cool and and i i bring all that up because that is it's important because that brings us to our location right here this is a super cool location i had no idea this even existed um, I would say you've always been pretty involved in like RP and stuff like that. You know, you've always kind of taken the time to like have a story or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, outside of like RP, would you say you're more PVP or PVE based? Or um, usually for both. Yeah, it's uh, it used to be uh, pretty equal for the most part. Um, but uh, recently, I've gotten more so into PVE just because of the addition of Mythic Plus. Um, but yeah, RP, I try to involve myself into the game as much as possible purely because it's a driving force for me. Um, I'm very passionate about the characters that I kind of make up. And uh, I try to tie it into um, the world PvP I do or... Uh, any other sort of PvP that I want to engage in. I'm not RPing constantly, but um, it helps me stay involved in the game and immersed in the game. And um, same thing with uh, PvP, but PvP I used to be uh, um, a lot more engaged in uh, back in WAD and Legion, I'd say, more than now. There, there was some music playing in here, uh, and I can't really hear it anymore, but um, to kind of piggyback off a point you made, I think that's, I've never really been like too into the whole RP thing, but I think it's cool that, you know, Blizzard kind of gave us the game and RP is kind of like your own personal way of playing it. So I could see where you and other players would be really into it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I yeah. like how uh, your RP had a beginning, middle, and end. The end kind of brings us to this location in game. Can you can you maybe tell the people watching at yeah. home what is what is so special about this location? So this location that we're standing in right now is a uh, at least the particular part of it is a uh, tomb of the unrepentant. Um, but as a whole, most people know it as uh, Cars on Crypt, and. Um, this whole location, anyway, is uh, completely, basically buried within um, the world itself because Blizzard just kind of wanted to lock it off. They modified it a little bit in Legion because of some uh, artifact quests. But um, mainly, it's uh, completely locked off because in the next room that's across from us, there's a room with a whole bunch of bodies that are chained up underwater and supposedly... Um, when they added that part to the game and they, they worked on it and they were going to add it to the game as a, just kind of like a feature because this whole place was going to be some kind of area for questing, I'm assuming. And um, I'm assuming this is in vanilla anyway. Um, they added that area and they were going for a T rating. But if they were to keep that part accessible in the game, it would require an M rating. So they decided to completely lock off this area. There's not a single NPC in here. And um, there's uh, gates that aren't properly labeled. Um, the music can shift. If we walk to the other side of the room, it'll bring us to Duskwood, even though we're still technically in Deadwood Pass. Um, it's completely unfinished, undeveloped zone. So I figured um, this would be a good location to bury one of my favorite characters um, that most people know me as, which was uh, Samrun. Samrun. Sami. Yeah, King of the Dark, um, who really is at this point. He's uh, sitting in the crypt behind us. And uh, that's uh, that was the end of Samrun uh, 
quite a while ago. He was uh, killed by none other than uh, Destry. That's crazy, man. I, he he was the first one of your characters. Like when I met you, you you were Samroon. Like that that was your Discord name. Uh, you were mm. a warlock, and and that image is just burned into my into my mind, man. Like I, I know you've moved on to different classes and you tried out different stuff, uh, but man. Just you just had that whole vibe down, dude, and uh, yeah, and like you said, man, some of this stuff is unfinished. I I have never even been here, but if I hover over this little gate, you can see that in uh, the bottom right corner of my screen, right above my my bags, you'll see where it says doodad underscore uh, portcullis active o five, and then this gate is uh, the same thing, but it's o six o two. This is really cool. Um, while while we're kind of like just walking around a little bit, I would like to zoom in on your transmog and check that out. I think that's super super cool, man. Is there uh, is is this like a specific set or is this something that you came up with? You even have like the little pouch in front for your little gold, man. Maybe like a granola bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, um, I threw this together. It was a uh, kind of my imagining of uh if i could combine um the outfit that venom snake wears in metal gear solid 5 with something that's more inclined to uh which would be you know the world of warcraft i try to combine the two and try to make something that uh, kind of fits in the world and i guess it kind of did the thing with the uh, blood elves is i can't exactly get the the hairstyle or hair color right but i was like you know what close enough so i decided to work on the mog mainly but yeah this is a just various pieces um and uh i just kind of threw it together and seemed to match pretty well same thing with the gun so yeah really awesome man you could even be like a maybe your rp story could be like you're a fucking vampire hunter or something man that's a huge gun dude like <laughs> that's crazy and uh if you want man um uh, we can take a, you're saying that we, we can get through these gates over here. Is that right? Yeah, we can. So, um, these, uh, these are basically just completely unlocked gates. Um, the only way to get down here is to, um, essentially just like kill yourself or, uh, there's a, someone told me once that there was a quest you can do where you would have access to, to this entire place. But, um, I, I haven't done it myself anyway. Um, yeah, these are just a, a few of the rooms that are down here. Most of them aren't even properly lit. And then you have this pool over here, and this pool is basically the the nail in the coffin for the development cycle of this area. Um, it's called the Upside Down Sinners. That's crazy, man. I have to make a quick comment, man. After like looking at all these mounds of dirt, I've never driven a monster truck, but I really want to bring a monster truck down here and like hit these ramps, man. This would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Oh. <laughs> no, I know it's uh, yeah, it's crazy. Can you actually go under this water and swim? Like, if you fished, I wonder if you could like catch some interesting stuff. Or this is yeah. just nuts, man. This is definitely one of the coolest interview spots ever. Yeah, this, this is. is cool. uh, I actually uh, wrote a short story that's based on this place, and uh, half of it takes place in the location here, um, and. Uh, it's like a horror story I wrote for one of my old characters. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a... I didn't even know about this place until uh, about mid-BC. Um, and uh, somebody told me about, you know, like how you can actually get down there. Back then, it was a lot more convoluted. You basically had to take a noggin fogger elixir, and you had to, like, um, glitch yourself in, and you had to, like... Uh, essentially slow fall through the wall just to get through here. And it took a lot of tries. <laughs> this is why WoW is such a cool game, man. Like, there's just, no matter how long you've been playing, like, I just feel like you're, you're always able to discover something new. Um, yeah, exactly. If we what, go further down, we can get um, to the next room, actually. Just, really? Just follow me. I swim real slow. Hang on, let me try to catch up to you. <laughs> I'm not even sure how a tar can swim, to be honest. <laughs> and while we're swimming, man, what's cool is, uh, you know, I met you in ISR, and then you went to another guild, and, and now, you know, you've kind of went from maybe like an, 
a player to an officer level to now you're actually a guild master. You, you've started your own guild. Is that true? Yeah. Um, it wasn't the first guild I made. Um, I had a few other ideas floating around in my head, but um, I never really could get them to work because I just, uh, I don't know. It's in, Sometimes I lose passion. Sometimes I just uh, can't get enough people behind the idea. Um, or uh, sometimes I just switch up characters and it's uh, it doesn't exactly match in line, you know. Um, and I do switch characters a lot, as most people know. Most people can't even really keep up with my names. But um, this was one of the first ideas I came up with. Uh, it was right after I left ISR. Um, and the idea is basically just a direct reference to uh, the Metal Gear Solid universe, which if people aren't familiar with it, um, Big Boss created Outer Heaven as kind of like a sanctuary for soldiers and mercenaries to uh, serve as a private military company to help those around the world who do not have a military that require aid or uh, to essentially unite the world under his banner. It kind of went south after that, as uh, people familiar with the franchise are aware of. But um, hopefully that doesn't happen with me. <laughs> I think that's cool. And it's sweet that like you brought something from a different game, like Indo Wow. And there's definitely other players who, you know, enjoy different series. And, you know, they may see it and say, mm -hmm. oh, my God, dude, is that, you know, such and such reference? I think that's yeah, sweet. Ex yeah, exactly. And, you know, like uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's kind of fitting at, in some aspects anyway, um, especially to my own personal experiences. But I just, uh, Metal Gear Solid's my favorite franchise, so I figured, you know, like if I'm going to try to impassion myself to uh, lead a guild and uh, get it all organized and get everybody under the same banner, you need something flexible and you need something that you're passionate about. And um, I definitely want to work with both. And so here I am and outer heaven that's sweet you know cool idea and uh you know i've got faith that you can keep it strong um before like i said we met each other like two years ago and and you know we've both really grown as players uh i'm still totally like level one in, in isr and that that's by hmm. design that's what i want to be i really don't want too much responsibility um but you know now you're on the other side of the coin where you're a guild master can I ask, uh, how exactly did you get to Emerald Dream? Um, you know, what was like your first day on Emerald Dream like? You know, do you still have your first Emerald Dream character? Uh, do you plan on staying on Emerald Dream? I know that, you know, you have played on a couple of different servers. Do you plan on staying here? Yeah. Um, I was originally uh, a bit lofty to uh, the decision on whether or not I would have stayed. But um, I ultimately made the decision that if I'm ever going to be playing this game, it's going to have to be on the server because if you're if you get into the server enough, you know it kind of encompasses you that way. Um, but I originally came in Emerald Dream, uh, to Emerald Dream in uh, Miss of Pandaria, about the middle, just close to the end. And um, originally I was on Anixia, which is a really tiny server. But back in BC, it was, of course, pretty populated. And uh, um, me and uh, one of my friends, uh, Frenix, that you know him, yep. as uh, we played together for years. He actually got me into the game back in junior high. And uh, we, uh, we played for ages. And uh, we decided, you know what, let's just take a chance and let's go to this server because it's a RP PVP. Why not? Let's see what they have. So he boosted a character. I can't remember quite what he boosted. Maybe it was a hunter. Um, and then I boosted a shaman. And uh, we started meandering around Emerald Dream. And it was we re quickly realized it is a complete all-out war zone. <laughs> yeah. was, it was a, the one of the first things I saw was a huge battle in... Um, Veil of Eternal Blossoms, and it was against uh, Orsong Battalion, which was full 80 strong, and it was Jalen and uh, um, his former GM, I think, leading Warbringer, and there was Clan Battlehammer, there was the pack, there was uh, 
I think, a few of uh, chaos. And they're all sitting up on the shrine. And WSB's down below. And they're just like, they push into each other. And it's this huge, like, Lord of the Rings scale battle. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. That was, like, one of my first vivid memories of Emerald Dream. And that is what caused me to never leave the server. Yeah, world PvP, That you know. I just remember, you know, kind of like seeing a battle like that or like the first time, you know, you actually are a part of like a 40 plus person group and you go to do something. It that really changed, you know, how I kind of wanted to play the game. Uh, I'm not too much of like a quest guy, but yeah, I really do love uh, world PvP. And, you know, you'd set a name uh, of a guild and maybe we can kind of talk about current day stuff like that was in the past, you know, back in like Moppy Mm -hmm. said. What's kind of your opinion on the current state of Emerald Dream? I know a lot's kind of happened in the last maybe 10 days or so. Uh, how do you feel about everything? Well, yeah, um, it, was a, it was a massive uh, shift in polarities, especially back, um, back just even a few months ago. The uh, difference between then and now, even during BFA or maybe even the end of Legion, is completely different, totally different climate. And um, it mainly has to do, in part, with uh, the guilds um, and also activity, right? If people aren't passionate enough about the game that they're playing, then they're not going to be as passionate about uh, rivalries or uh, sticking with their own guilds or uh, trying to essentially you know, create some kind of activity that everybody can get involved in. Usually with Emerald Dream, that is World PvP. Um, I usually think of Emerald Dream as kind of like a living beast. Um, it yeah. really just kind of encompasses players and it pushes them against each other, almost like the force from Star Wars, basically. It's just like force. pick a side, you know, light and dark, and who's going to end out on top. Truth is, with Emerald Dream, the fight never ends and nobody ends out on top. <laughs> yeah. Um, the force are always equal. Exactly. Um, but recently, the Alliance. Um, at least in the past few months, has been dwindling. Um, a lot of people were heading to Wormrest Accord, mainly the RPers, because they just didn't want to put up with uh, a lot of the warfare anymore. Um, the Horde was kind of uh, getting bigger and stronger, and there were more guilds coming out there, becoming more aggressive. It pushes them off. And honestly, I was going to join the pilgrimage to just kind of try it out anyway for uh, Wormrest. Um, Decided against it ultimately, um, and when I came back to Emerald Dream, I realized you know like there's less players to interact with on Alliance. Uh, there's less to do. Um, if the Horde doesn't have somebody to fight, the Horde starts to get bored, you know. And so uh, the beast kind of goes to sleep, and then all of a sudden something happens, almost like a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, certain. Uh, War leader named Manchu gets uh, his um, big idea to go to Alliance, create a massive crusade that will push against the Horde. Suddenly you wake up this huge sleeping beast. You wake up the Horde. Everybody gets impassioned. The entirety of the Alliance gets woken up. They start joining him. Some people from the Horde swap over. They start joining him, and suddenly you have a gigantic war again. It's like something that hasn't really been seen since probably WAD. There were bits and pieces of that in Legion with uh, the Alliance Empire coming over. But um, ultimately, you have reliance on activity. You have reliance on GMs wanting to keep that activity going. Sometimes GMs just decide not to, and they'll completely give up on a guild, or they'll just ghost. but if you have impassioned players, and if you have a thriving Emerald Dream, you have a war that never ends. And it's something that the people on the server live for. And they can get down and dirty with it, and they are happy as can be. And if people can't handle it, sometimes they can't. But, you know, that's ultimately how the beast has grown. Yeah, and I love that analogy of, like, you know, the beast was kind of woken up. You know, the players definitely feel it when it's like, you know, man, 
you know, back in this expansion or whatever, you know, we always used to do this or we'd always fight these people or this or that. And, you know, the players can definitely feel where there's kind of like a dip in like, you know, kind of like that really good warfare. And I definitely feel like the beast was woken up. We'll have to see what happens. Um, if you want, uh, let's try to take a run up this staircase. I kind of want to see uh, a little bit more of this place. And um, before we started this interview, you know, you'd also said like there's there's not even critters down here. Like, this place is just totally empty, man. Yeah. No, it's uh, completely barren. And uh, like I said, some bits of it aren't lit up here. Like, if you see, there's, like, entire black walls here and spots because it's just so dark. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, see, <laughs> here is, uh, you know, we were just in the Tomb of the Unrepentant. Here's a Tome of the Unrepentant, probably a typo, you know, and... Uh, there's a uh, just like this little corridor in here, and you know, it's just the forgotten crypt. In. Oh man, hang out down yeah. here. How creepy would it be, dude, if we just saw like a player, like just like sitting, not AFK or anything, like still totally there, like just he just sits there. That yeah, would be so no. creepy, dude, to be in this corner like that, and like face out. Yeah, I know. Um, that's sometimes where I take screenshots. I think I took a screenshot of my druid once here. And he was just kind of like sitting in the dark because, you know, like it, it works really well. Um, I think I only ever came down here once and found like one other person. But for the most part, people just don't come down here. Let me jump down here. This, this connects uh, back to that previous hallway. But um, yeah, it's a it's a quite a spanning corridor. And so I decided, you know, like, why not just put Somron down here? Somron was a character that I... Uh, I played with a very long time, and those who knew me as Somran probably know that in ISR, the whole time I was making a voice like this, yes. and I would get very impassioned about it, and um, so I would, uh, you know, essentially play as Somran 24-7. Nobody knew me as who I am right now. Nobody met me with my real voice. They only ever heard is Somran the Black, you know? Yeah, man. Um, for real, and that and, and so, I, I, I related to that because you know I didn't do my whole face reveal for a while. Sorry to cut you off, but like I definitely related yeah. to that man. I thought that was cool. It definitely added to like your persona as a character, and I was like, dude, mm -hmm. this guy is like all the fucking way through with it. Like, you know, <laughs> like like he's not Billy. Like he he is that character, and I was like, that's you know he's into this shit. So I really yeah. always like that man. You know, yeah. Even on Twitter, I would do it, and uh, um. It was a lot of fun doing it that way, um, just because, you know, you can really get into anything that you want. Um, if uh, yeah. if somebody was watching at home and, uh, you know, they want to know a little bit more about your guild, what, what direction do you kind of want to push it? Is this going to be like kind of like a 33-way split between like PvE, PvP, and like RP? Or what direction do you um, want to go? Well, I think, um, at least in my personal opinion, I think the reason why a lot of guilds uh, particularly don't make it too far unless they're a world PvP guild, I think it's usually because the GM will try to kind of have a direction for the guild that they want to go in. They'll, uh, they'll essentially try to create, you know, like, this is a PvE raiding guild. And we have raid times, and we don't really do anything else. And for people who want raiding, they can absolutely get that. And um, if somebody doesn't want that, but they join for like another aspect or something like that, then maybe they just don't know what they expect, right? And the same thing can be found with other guilds. And so I didn't really want that because if you set too high of a standard, or um, set too many things that maybe some people won't be interested in. Um, sometimes you just have a guild that doesn't succeed as well. So I decided I'm going to make Outer Heaven with uh, the members in mind. I want to create a guild where the members don't feel like they have to be restricted to some particular rules. I didn't want to feel that, you know, this is a PvP guild. We only do PvP um, or PvE in that case. Um, but I wanted it to 
be more of not necessarily a casual guild, but something that like if enough players are involved in something, let's just do it. You know, um, Outer Heaven. The idea of Outer Heaven is the implication in which soldiers have freedom, and so I wanted the same thing with my members. I want people to feel like they can freely do whatever they like, and um, so I still uh, kind of keep to that even now. And um, I hope that going on down the road, I can keep that up. And if enough people are interested, they'll uh, do the same. Um, because I I want to act as GM, but I don't. The, the The name of boss is kind of ironic in its own sense because I'm not really the boss of anybody, no, nor do I want to be. Um, I just want people to have fun, and I I would like them under the same roof because I like being the host of a party, you know. Yeah, for real, man. And a uh, couple quick points. You have boss all original letters. Mm -hmm. And what what would also be kind of cool, man, is like for your guild, I know it's already kind of been created, so it's not technically like a housewarming party or anything. But like what if we kind of like had a party for the guild and you like down here? What if, you know, we kind of like planned an event and, uh, you know, we could kind of all run around. And how crazy would it be to see like, you know, maybe 100 people down here? I would actually kind of like that. And I've had ideas for that in the past. Um, back in August, I think I was going to host a, kind of like a masquerade ball where um, I'd have everybody wearing like masks or helmets that they'd like. Um, and we'd all go down to Somrin's old uh, hideout. And we were all just going to hang out down there as like a big server. But then I realized, you know, if you include a horde and alliance, there's going to be some fights. Everybody's going to be fighting each other. It's going to be a big mess, which I don't entirely mind. Um, but uh, if it was horde specific, I would absolutely love that because, you know, like, why not just have everybody down here? But another idea of Outer Heaven is also uh, faction neutrality. Um, most of the members uh, in my guild, including myself, don't really have any specific loyalty to either faction. We don't really fight for the Horde or for the Alliance. Oh, that's cool. um, we happen to be on Horde, but um, I don't want to feel like I only support the Horde and I only follow them, and I don't want to feel like uh, the Alliance always sees me as an enemy, you know? Um, of course, in this game, you have to pick, pick a faction. Mm -hmm. but um, So I decided to go with Horde just out of convenience, and everybody else wanted it. But um, if I could somehow include all players of Emerald Dream, all players that feel I'm passionate about it, I would uh, I would love that very much. <laughs> this here is the wooden gate that they just kind of slapped out here because they. Didn't <laughs> Do we have any here. extra materials from Ogre Mar? Maybe that we could like throw down here and just kind of block it off. Yeah. Like this is like some sort of <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't fit at all. Not so at all. Just like, well, we need a wall here. Just throw it out. <laughs> Man. Stop us. I mean, maybe we could even do like a war mode off sort of event. Uh, but also, you can you can duel down here too, uh, which is yeah. cool. So if it is horde, and maybe you know if you want to duel or something, maybe we could have a designated area. Um, but Let's yeah, go. man. Well, then we, all, all you need is a warlock to get down here, and we can just like. That's so there. true. So Samarone's um, uh, revival party, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe we can get enough to. Uh, resurrect him he's still sleeping down there in reality i put the name somber on a death knight but ultimately i did not decide on playing a death knight so i'd like to bring my warlock back at some point but you've um, played a lot of classes man like Samrun and that i mm -hmm. remember you, you dabbled a little bit with demon hunter um you know death yeah. knight and and now now you're on a hunter um what would you say is uh I know stats change and stuff like that, and it's not always balanced, but do you have a favorite class that you know, you've kind of always just had a thing for? Um, it would have to be my Warlock, because uh, Sauron was the very first character I ever made. When I came in Burning Crusade, I think I came right at the start of uh, the Black Temple patch, and that was uh, my first introduction of the game. I made an undead Warlock, and I was like, mm, Sauron. Sauron is actually the name of a tattoo from the game Fable for Xbox. Um, and I was like, oh, Summons is a cool name. Why not? Let's just go with that. And so I kind of built around that character, combined him with uh, 
Palpatine in the the Horned King um, from the Black Cauldron and Skeletor. Skeletor. And I was like, yeah, I was like, what if I made him really evil and villainous, but also very silly? Like he doesn't really know what he's doing, but um, he's uh, still very malicious and cunning, you know? Um, So uh, I played that warlock for ages. So if I had to pick a class for that, it would definitely be warlock because, um, you know, that's just kind of been me. I've always been more of a spellcaster type. But uh, I'm impassioned about uh, stories, and that includes movies, that includes books, that includes music, um, mainly movies. I'm a pretty big movie buff. But I, when I find a character I like, I get very impassioned about it, and I try to build another character of my own around the same kind of uh, quips, characteristics, or mannerisms, of that character. I did it with Neander, who's a Sauron's apprentice, based on Neander Wallace. I did it with, uh, obviously, <laughs> Boss here. Nice, but you got a lot of, like, IRL references, like, thrown in here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if you knew all that stuff, uh, you know, you could... I'm sure some people poke you sometimes, say, hey, you know, does that mean this? Or, you know, I like that name, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, they're like, oh, is this a reference to etc. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's kind of a fluent thing for me. But uh, I almost see it as like fads. Sometimes I just go through fads where I'm like, I really love this character and I love his music. And, you know, like uh, I'll uh, play a class that is based around the character and I'll play it for months and then I'll just like lose interest and I'll swap to a new character. So that's why so many people know me as different names is because I can't really stick with one character. I just <laughs> got to have them impossible. all, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'd, I'd love to be any character that I possibly can that I love as opposed to just being one person that people know me as, you know, um, the many face God. Yeah. From uh, I'm, I'm, Thrones. I'm like the devil from uh, um, that one movie. Good. Devil <laughs> Bad Kid. Where he's like, oh, I got so many names, you know. like. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the devil yeah. guy, uh, you're really nice, dude. And I, I truly value our friendship. Like, uh, we, we have been friends a long time, man. And, um, yeah. you know, we've, we've seen each other in so many different discords. And I know when I see it, you had me cracking up one night, man. Like, you've never heard me laugh that hard before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was such a funny night, man. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe that I made you laugh that hard. <laughs> it was great. That was awesome. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to show me all this stuff and, and answer my questions. Uh, I usually like to end with, you know, shout outs. You know, do you have any friends that you made along the way or anybody that's made your Emerald Dream experience an enjoyable one? Oh, yeah. Um, big shout out to. Iron Sworn Regiment, um, one of my first home guilds, because I never really uh, stuck with a guild all throughout MOP and most of WAD. And then Shadow comes along, sees me fighting in a Hellfire Peninsula on uh, my paladin. I'm taking on like three members of Chaos, but I couldn't kill them. All I could do was survive. So I'm like sitting there desperately living on my paladin. He comes along. He just like murders all three of them in an instant. I could, I just turned around and they were all dead. <laughs> and he was like, hey, want to join the guild? At the time, it was Pride of the Fall. And I was like, eh, don't count on me staying. Well, I ended up staying. Nice yeah, like for, a year later. Yeah. Yeah, for like a year and a half and ultimately becoming an officer. And a uh, big shout out to Ren. Um, big shout out to Smokey. Um, two really good friends of mine, um, at least that I consider. Um, I have, out of all GMs on Emerald Dream, I have the biggest respects for Ren because I just can't believe how he still perseveres through so much, you know? And uh, same thing with, um, you know, Jalen as well. But uh, honestly, I wish I could shout out all of Emerald Dream because I just love the server. But, um, you know, I can't course but <laughs> yeah way too many people and yeah i, I totally it, it, it's a tough question uh just because there mm-hmm. are so many people um but oh yeah and I, i've been here for so long and i just uh i love you all <laughs> <laughs> yeah same same answer for me um but thank you very much man uh we'll definitely have to do a follow-up later on in the future maybe come back here maybe have that party maybe i could stream the party down here or something like that 
Yeah, you know, that is a great idea. I think I'm going to have to work on that. Yeah, man, we could definitely get it figured out again. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for your time, man. I know we've been trying to plan this out for a while now. I'm really happy we got it done. I think it came out great. And uh, oh, yeah. to everybody watching at home, I appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you next time.